Next on Stampede. World news, including the Super Bowl and more, as well as two new competition teams are forming here at Milligan, plus the latest scoop of crimes on campus, and we've got a recap of good news worldwide. In sports, we've got updates for men's and women's basketball, and baseball kicks off their season too. Swim dives in, and track and field also compete. These stories and more are coming up next. Stampede TV begins now. Welcome to Stampede TV. I'm Grace Teeter. And I'm William Wagner. This semester, we've got a whole new schedule. Every other Thursday, we will be giving you all the updates right here, as well as a recap of stories our print team has published on Stampede.com. We begin with the biggest sports news in the nation from last Sunday. Will went on site to the CAF to see students' opinions before the big game. The National Football League is arguably one of the biggest sports organizations in the world. Their championship game is to be played on February 7th at 6.30 when the AFC champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, will take on the NFC champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This game will happen in Tampa Bay, Florida, and it is the first time that an NFL team will play in their home stadium during the Super Bowl. The students at Milligan have weighed in on who they think will win the Lombardi Trophy on February 7th. And who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl today? Uh, I want to say the Chiefs, but the Bucks. I don't know what Tom Brady, so we'll see. Hoping Chiefs, though. Bucks. Buccaneers. Kansas Chiefs. Tampa Bay. The Chiefs are going to win. It's going to be the Bucks. Tom Brady for life, man. Can't beat him. Kansas City Chiefs, baby. Despite enthusiasm from students, other students really could care less. What's the Super Bowl? Uh, I don't really care, so I'm going to do homework. <laughs> Honestly, don't care, but Tampa. I have no idea who's playing at all. Sports ball. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers would win their second Super Bowl title in franchise history when they defeated the Kansas City Chiefs 31-9. The Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady would throw for three touchdowns and win the Knights MVP award giving him his fifth in his career, as well as his seventh Super Bowl title. He now holds more Super Bowl titles than any franchise in NFL history, surpassing his former team, the New England Patriots, at six, and the illustrious Pittsburgh Steelers at six. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes would spend much of the Super Bowl running for his life from Buccaneers defenders. According to NFL's next-gen stats, which charted the game and calculated that Mahomes had to travel the most yards, a total of 497 before either getting sacked or throwing the ball, this is the most by any quarterback in a single game since 2016. After the game, there was much speculation and wonder if any of the star players would come back to defend the title, as most of the star players were either on one or two year contracts that would render them as free agents after the game. But in post game interviews, most of the players that were in question confirmed that they would be back to defend their title. That gives Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans hope at a back-to-back -back championship, which hasn't happened since Tom Brady led the New England Patriots to back-to-back -back championships back in the early 2000s. This also puts fear in 31 other franchises as hopes of their Super Bowl chances next year dwindle down. With the offseason now underway, trades, drafts, and so much more in the NFL to keep an eye on. But... On August 5th, 2021, the NFL will kick off its preseason in Canton, Ohio for the NFL Hall of Fame game, when the Pittsburgh Steelers will face the Dallas Cowboys. So if you're a football fan and can't wait for the NFL to return, set your calendars to August 5th. It was great to be able to speak to students before the game and surprising how many of them predicted the outcome. Later, we'll be looking at two new competition teams on campus. In other national news this weekend, the short squeeze of GameStop stocks fueled by amateur traders lived up to its name as stock prices plummeted back to $63.77 a share over the weekend. Beginning the last week of January, individual investors began purchasing stock in GameStop, an electronic company hit particularly hard by the pandemic. According to The Guardian, much of these investors were inspired by the Wall Street Bed subreddit forum, which promoted the move as a battle of the normal person versus hedge funds 
and big Wall Street firms. As the online buzz grew, so did the price of GameStop stocks. According to the Wall Street Journal, hedge funds such as Maybline Capital ended January with a roughly 45% loss. Despite the damage done, the soaring price of GameStop stocks came to an abrupt end. This quick crash was due in part to the app Robinhood, which hosted many of the private investors' entry point to the stock market. Once the initial soar in prices hit the market, Robinhood blocked users from purchasing stocks in GameStop and seven other companies. According to The Guardian, by February 2nd, there were over 30 class action lawsuits claiming damages and potential losses from Robinhood ban on trading. According to PC Magazine, these lawsuits are unlikely to hold up in court due to the customer agreement all users sign that notes the app's powers to stop stocks buys without prior notice. An estimated $30 billion was created and subsequently destroyed in the short squeeze. Though fueled by internet forums, the ramifications for this occurrence will be firmly stuck in reality. In campus news, SGA has now finished stage one of critical conversations this past Thursday. The discussions were designed to bring light and civil dis discourse to the LGBTQ issues brought up on campus last semester. From Chase McGlamory, SGA's critical conversation series is off to a successful start with around 45 undergraduate students participating in Tuesday's discussions. Exciting news about upcoming events and activities are in works and will be released soon. As always, students can submit their questions or concerns by using the e-suggestion box located in Canvas. The conversation series has three different phases. Phase one consisted of three independent student groups. Each group contained 10 to 15 people and was led by a student moderator. SGA executive Don Dalton Scheel, Kevin Odom, and Chase McGlamory served as the moderators. The phase was closed to the public. Phase two involves bringing three to four students from each independent student group discussion together, as well as new members to add varying viewpoints and broaden the discussion. The three moderators will also be present for this phase to help summarize ideas press presented in the conversations held in phase one. During the third and final phase, results of conversations held by the student groups and faculty members will be brought together. After the student groups and faculty members have discussed their ideas and developed a plan, the conversations will then be shared with the rest of the Milligan community. For more information about critical conversations, check out milliganstampede.com. Milligan's bowling program will begin in the fall of 2021 with Brian Rickard as head coach. Rickard comes to Milligan after serving as the assistant bowling coach at Ottawa University for the last two years. Rickard says, I'm very excited to be the head bowling coach at Milligan University and to be part of starting the program from the ground up. The program makes Milligan the 50th school in the NAIA to offer bowling as an intercollegiate sport for both men and women. Milligan will also be starting a debate team in the fall of 2021. Dr. Michael Blue, an associate professor of English and Humanities, will be serving as the director. Dr. Bluen said, I was interested in starting a debate team because it felt to me as though the time was right. I think in today's climate, it's more important than ever that a student learn how to participate in a civil discourse, learn how to make arguments in a respectful and loving way. Scholarships are attached to the debate team and tryouts will be in the first week of September 2021. For more information or to request a tryout, email Michael Bluen at mjbluen at milligan.edu. Unfortunately, this week we have crime news to bring you from Milligan's campus. Avery and Pablo have spoken with Brent Nipper about vandalism and break-ins. Around 1 a.m. on December 25, Milligan's grounds were vandalized by a car taking advantage of the festive snowfall. Grassy areas near Gregory, Hart, and even the soccer fields were affected. Brent Nipper, Director of Property and Risk Management at Milligan University, commented on the incident. It was actually on Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, I think it was around one in the morning, um, somebody, it had snowed, somebody got onto two or three different areas on, and just kind of drove around and did donuts and just generally <laughs> messed some stuff up. The vandalism incident was reported to the police the next day. The person responsible remains unknown. You know, took some pictures, checked some video cameras, and tried to identify the people or the vehicle as best we can. Um, did get some video footage, but it wasn't really definitive enough to identify either the people or the vehicles. Um, uh, we did file a report with the police department, and they've got that on file, and then they made their the patrol officers aware and to kind of be on the lookout for that kind of thing. 
Milligan's landscaping crew is currently working to clean up the tire tracks near Gregory, while the soccer field proves to be a more difficult fix. Yeah, it, it can be pretty expensive. It's the main thing with our staff, it just takes their time away from doing other things. Student Drew Burton commented on how he felt vandalism affects campus life. I mean, it's really sad. Uh, we have a really pretty campus, and um, it's just sad that people don't want to take care of it. And uh, we have like fun activities like disc golf and really pretty grounds. So I don't know. It's just kind of sad that, uh, that people don't appreciate that. And now to Pablo. Saturday night into Sunday morning, uh, we had some individuals come onto campus and go through a uh, parking area and uh, try to open some cars. And uh, we were able to get into several vehicles and. Uh, took some things out of them. Uh. Several vehicles on campus were burglarized over the weekend. On Saturday night, four suspects broke into a total of five cars in the Hart Hall and MSA parking lots. According to a few of the victims, some items were stolen from their vehicles and no items were stolen in others. In both of these accounts, the console and glove compartments were wide open and various items within the car were scattered across the front seats and the floorboards. The students affected chose to stay anonymous. So here I've done a recreation of just how it looked like when uh, the vehicle was uh, broken into. So as you can see here, the glove compartment was wide open. Uh, the console was also wide open as well. There was stuff just scattered all over the seats and the floorboards. Um, and it just looked like this when the, uh, the victim uh, just opened their car uh, the morning of Sunday. Here's what head of Milligan security, Brent Nipper, had to say about increasing security on campus in the wake of the break-ins. So when we received the first report, we uh, informed our campus security officers uh, that it had happened and asked them to patrol the area with a little more frequency. Um, and then we also contacted Elizabeth and Police Department and asked them uh, to do some extra patrols on campus as well, which they've been doing. And we gathered all the information that we have uh, from people making reports and the video footage and different things like that. Turned all that over to Elizabeth and uh, Police Department and they've assigned an investigator and I'll work with that investigator to keep updated on the investigation and find out if any more uh, developments happen. If we find out about anything else, we'll pass that along to them uh, to aid in their investigation. Make sure you keep your vehicles locked and your personal items stored in a secure place. If you find that your car has been broken into or have any information regarding this issue, email Brent Nipper at wbnipper at milligan.edu or call 423-461-8911 to make a report or for further information about campus safety and security. This is Pablo Rivas with Stampede TV. Now back to Will with some lighter news. With the spring semester officially underway, the majority of Milligan students may find themselves too busy to observe the ongoing of global news. If you find yourselves as one of these students, here's a brief look into a positive event happening outside of campus. 24 states are now making school teachers eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, and Tennessee is one of them. Not only in this news comforting to the, to the loved ones of these teachers, but it is also reassuring to all those hoping to return to, to a state of nor in fear in the near future. As the months progress, more states are expected to join the numbers of the growing dispersion of the vaccine. As Milligan students return to campus for the spring 2021 semester, the Student Government Association kicked off their, le their leadership with a meeting last Thursday night. While the meeting itself was short, the main topic at hand was discussing how future meetings will be taking place. SGA members will be broken down into smaller, more specific committees to discuss all future projects. This change, of course, is being done out of caution for the overall well-being of its members. For more information for up-and-coming SGA-sponsored activities, be sure to check out bulletin boards posted around the campus. This semester, Milligan has introduced its newest feature, Spectrum U. Spectrum U is a video streaming service that uses your Milligan Network ID to access 150 live channels and over 7,000 hours of on-demand content. When connected to the Milligan Wire, or wireless network, Spectrum U allows on-campus residents to access an expanded channel lineup and on-demand content. When not connected to the campus network, residents are still able to use the service, but some content will not be available. Learn how to log in, download the app, and view the channel lineup on Milligan today and contact the IT Help Desk if you have questions at helpdesk at milligan.edu. In sports news, baseball went undefeated in their home tournament, beating Rio Grande twice and Thomas More twice. 
Braden Spano and Justin Green were Milligan's hitting leaders over the two-day tournament, both batting 7 for 15. Men's basketball beat Kentucky Christian 83 to 63, but suffered a loss in overtime against Point University with a final score of 84 to 82. Women's basketball also lost against Point University 75 to 57. Track and field competed in two in invitationals, resulting in 10 national qualifiers and 28 personal bests. This week, swim competes in the conference tournament today through Saturday, and track and field compete in the M. VMI Classic on Friday and Saturday. Baseball will face Lindsey Wilson on Friday and Saturday. Softball plays a doubleheader against Johnson University on Saturday. Men's volleyball will play Cumberland University and Georgetown College on Saturday as well. This has been Grace Teeter for Stampede TV. And I've been William Wagner for Stampede TV. For the latest news information, visit us online at milliganstampede.com. Tune into the Roundup, our weekly podcast, or check us out on social media. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us for our next newscast on February 25th.